with great pomp, fanfare, and ceremony. Pope Francis, the head of the Jesuit order, announced through his cantor the eminent emergence, the near advent of the coming to light of the Antichrist. During this pronouncement, the cantor called Lucifer God, claiming Lucifer to be the father of Jesus Christ. The cantor acknowledged Lucifer as the Antichrist himself and worshipped him. To this a great crowd and the whole world sang This was the 3D ceremony that the Pope wanted to be seen worldwide. The announcement to the world, the son of perdition, this way comes. <laughs>
this next story is, uh, well, it, it makes me angry. I'm sure it makes you angry as well when you hear these stories. You can almost call it a protected racket. And I'm talking about televangelists. That's right. The ones who rake in billions of dollars a year on donations because they are nonprofit ministries. Don't even have to declare any of this stuff. The men of the cloth don't have to tell anybody just how much they make or uh, even how they spend it. They don't even have to pay taxes. And now a Senate panel is investigating a money trail that leads straight into the pocketbooks of several of these televangelists. We're talking about lavish lifestyles here. Rolls Royce, $2,000 suits. And that's just the tip of the unchristlike personal greed involved in some of these churches. Ole Anthony is the president of the Trinity Foundation. Uh, he's investigated televangelists for 20 years now. You know, it, it, it's amazing. I mean, uh, I'm a Christian. And I certainly believe in doing everything you can. And it doesn't mean that these guys aren't allowed to have a nice suit and a nice house and a nice car. But when you start talking about a Rolls Royce and a mil several million dollar home and, and private Lear jets and, and a $23,000 toilet, I mean, that's just over the pale, isn't it? It's, it's unbelievable. How about would he uh, live in a $12.5 million mansion or drive, <laughs> I mean, fly a Citation 10 jet? or get plastic surgery for the man and woman so that they would appear nice on television. It's, it's, it's a travesty. And it's, as I said, we are not caring for the poor. The poor and the needy are who Christ called us to meet their need, not to become greedy money grubbers. You've looked into this. I mean, here's a couple of the names that are being investigated now by the Senate. Uh, and they're asking them to come clean and say, look, how much you got and what are you doing? with?" There's one of them right there, Benny Hinn. Another one is Creflo Dollar. Another one is Kenneth Copeland, uh, Bishop Eddie Long, Joyce Meyer, Randy White. Who are these people? Tell us about them. Well, Benny Hinn is someone that we've uh, I've met personally with. He made me a promise he was going to reform. He was going to stop living in mansions and driving expensive cars. He said we have to re-examine our calling because some of the ancient saints lived in caves. Now he's... I mean, he's done, he's, it's far worse now. He's got a $12.5 million mansion oh on the God. Pacific Coast, <laughs> and he doesn't even have a church. It's his parsonage. You know what's Randy amazing? Randy and Paula White, are, you know, they're, they're, they just got a divorce. They probably argued over who had the best plastic surgery. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a sham. And they say that they have a right to be prosperous, and that's exactly what Jesus would have wanted us all to do. They make it sound like it's wrong to not have money or not spend it. You know, we're going to stay on this. I was talking to my staff earlier today, and we say, you know, this is an important story that America needs to hear about. There's little old ladies out there who are giving their dollars to these guys, and they're using it like this, and they should be able to spend it, but not like this. It just seems wrong. Ole Anthony, you're good to bring us this information. We're going to call you back. Is that cool? That's great. I appreciate it, man. Can I? Mean, I yep. Yeah, go, go ahead. You want to finish up? Go ahead. Well, most, there are many, many people in America that have been turned away from God by these men. And could I just say what I think God would say to these people? Please. He would say, O oh, stubborn and rebellious child, has my love no longer the power to melt your heart? Have you been driven away by those who claim to know me, but were filled with hypocrisy and greed and drunk with the stench of a death faith? Let the dead bury the dead. Let ignorance reproduce itself until it's weary of its own offspring.
me, sir. Forgot your receipt. Check outlines. Who needs them? Have a nice day. What is all this? The future. We have the power now. We can change the world. Imagine a machine with a full range of human emotion. Its analytical power will be greater than the collective intelligence of every person in the history of the world. Some scientists refer to this as the singularity. Professor? I call it transcendence. It's radiation poisoning. The bullet must have been laced with it. The effect is irreversible. Will's body is dying, but his mind is a pattern of electrical signals. We can upload his consciousness. We can save him. Not like this. Oh well, my god. I can't feel it. Maybe intelligent may even be sentient. This is not well. Shut it down. Shut it down. It's him. Your friend crossed the line. They don't know the danger. This is astounding. So, how do we fight it? Good god. Where are you going? Evolution is a spiritual process that moves us closer to the ideal of God. I mean, what, what is God? God is described as being unlimited in intelligence, creativity, love, beauty. We humans are going to start linking with each other and become this meta-intelligence. And we will eventually become an interconnection of the entire human race. At this moment in our civilization, we can create cybernetic individuals who, in just a few short years, be completely indistinguishable from us. Which leads to an obvious conclusion. We.